Russia will have the final say in the customs union as the northern neighbor of Kazakhstan now officially holds 57 percent of all votes in the decision making. On Tuesday, the administration of the Russian Federal Customs Service spoke, uh, spoke to reporters in Moscow, explaining the peculiarities of the customs union's math. Already by July, there will be no discrepancy between the United Customs tariffs and duties currently in place in Kazakhstan. The transition period for the majority of goods will be over. The fact that this will make prices to go up in Kazakhstan is fully acknowledged in Russia, but there is no way back as the rates have been already set. The upcoming separate talk between the head of state will only concern oil duties, while on May 21st, prime ministers of the three states will discuss car duties. However, even here, Kazakhstan risks to end up with a marginal benefit. Apparently, Russia continues to adjust the customs union mechanism exclusively with its own interests in mind. Now Moscow will hold 57 percent of all votes when dealing with union issues. I believe your fears are groundless, because if you look at the regulations, you will realize that while Russia holds 57 percent of all votes in decision-making, and Kazakhstan and Belarus have only 21 and a half each, the decision will be made only if there is consensus of 75 percent of votes or more. This means that Russia cannot do it alone, and it will need to cooperate with some other countries to reach these 75. The woman who climbed a construction crane in Astana was persuaded to stop her protest action on Tuesday. The entrepreneur from Shemkent, Kulzinita Bilova, spent almost 24 hours on the seven-store high tower. She said she would jump if a company owned by Kazimkan Masimov, the father of Kazakhstan's prime minister, will not pay back $170,000 it owes her. By the evening, the desperate woman was able to collect the entire amount, just as she demanded. Human rights activist Tala Sagambayev told journalists that $170,000 were passed to her through the third party. Sagambayev himself was detained by the police for organizing the protest action, but then released shortly after. According to the activists, if the prime minister's father will continue to ignore timely paying, there will be more similar actions. A person was driven to a despair and had to climb to a tower crane to get her money back after depleting all of the legal ways. This happening only because this incident is linked to a certain family. This is a shameful and paradoxical situation for our independent state. An activist of the unregistered party Alga won a trial against the company Display Intermedia. In early April, a district court ordered the firm to satisfy the claim of Vladimir Kozlov, but then the action was appealed with a counterclaim. Find out the rest of the story next. The Committee of Unregistered Party Alga defended in court his right for advocacy. Vladimir Kozlov, who won the case against Display Intermedia, did not attend the hearings, as he is currently serving his 15-day sentence for the organizing of a rally. Back on November 10, 2009, Alga's organization committee, represented by Kozlov, signed a contract with the company on the placement of TV ad and even made a 100% prepayment of almost $3,000. Nevertheless, the company failed to fulfill its part of the deal. This case is not about revenge. We just want to tell these companies that they should not just outright reject everything just because they deal with an opposition party. The judicial system and the state will protect it against the pinching of its rights. The presiding judge Don Muftasitov asked all cameras to be removed from the courtroom before announcing of a decision in favor of Kozlov. This is already his second trial one. In April, a district court has already ordered the display intermediate to fulfill its contract obligation on the provision of advertisement services to the opposition party. The company, however, seemed keen on ignoring any decisions, arguing that the contract was signed with formerly non-existing legal entity, the party Alga. On Tuesday, attorney Sergei Utkin proved the otherwise. Combating show-offs is now the new motivation of Kazakhstan's Chamber of Commerce, which will monitor the country's construction projects within the program of the Innovative Industry Development Plan approved this February. On March 12, during the meeting with entrepreneurs, President Nursultan Nazarbayev said, quote, I often take part in the opening ceremonies and afterwards find out that the actual date of the object's launch into operation takes place a year later. These are the cases of showing off and provocation. I will no longer participate in such ceremonies. The task of eliminating the repeat of provocations was laid on the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which will monitor the construction of 237 facilities in the next four years at the cost of 500,000. US dollars. The president and government entrusted the Chamber of Commerce and Industry with the monitoring the industrialization process. The president emphasized that this is done to eliminate any shortcomings encountered in the past. After all, if project is being eliminated, it shouldn't become a long-term enterprise. We need to make sure it is working fine and creates new jobs opportunities. 
I believe we will no longer see the repeat of the prior mistakes. Meanwhile, the authors of the new education development reform finally admit that teachers' wages in Kazakhstan should be increased. Currently, teachers' salaries are lower than the average wages in the country, although the situation should be reversed before 2015. This, however, should not be seen as compensation for years of desperate existence. With increased earnings, the control over teachers' work will be tightened. It will be monitored for efficiency using special criteria specified within the program. In addition, independent evaluators are planned to be involved in the process. As a result, bonuses could triple depending on a teacher's qualification, category and current salary. All of this is being done with a single purpose in mind, to increase the popularity of the profession. Because at the moment, the prestige of the career is at all times law. In the past, teachers' training institutes were opened according to the President's decree, but we still have the issue of understaffing. There is no secret that graduates of education universities often do not work in their field or retrain for other professions instead of working in schools. Their initial education, however, was covered by the state, as 9,000 of 36,000 teachers were trained as at the state order. On Tuesday, publications united under the brand of Respublika celebrated their anniversary as the first issue of the Business Review saw the light of day on May 18, 1990. To commemorate the important date, the editorial staff prepared an exhibit in an Almaty hotel displaying the newspaper's archives, photos and early issues of the publication. Still, the most interesting part of the collection is the attributes of numerous rallies and protest actions that are no firmly associated with the Respublika group. The collection includes famous lemons and horse radish for a BTA bank, as well as improvised access of censorship. For one single exhibit, journalists managed to piece together the history of the editorial office. The newspaper staff is confident that the authorities' resentment of their publication only proves its independence and high professional level. Behind me you can see a display about 2002. Back then someone placed funeral garlands and beheaded dogs inside our office and then burned it down. We survived and now I think we can do it in any conditions because we are doing pure journalism. The Respublica Umbrella unites several publications, Respublica Business Review, Respublica Business Review Take Two, as well as more recent Golas Respublica, The Voice of Republic, and Maya Respublica, My Republic. In the last 10 years, there were numerous attempts to shut the publication down. The newspaper has a rich history, including arrests of the circulation and telephone threats. The authorities went as far as hanging animals' carcasses on the office windows. Many things are cyclic for Respublica, just as 80 years ago the newspaper is being published using a risograph, as all printing houses reject working with the outlet. Nevertheless, the journalist team is ready to go on no matter what. This were all the news for today. Thank you for watching. Stay with us.